This is a curl to diagonal press with a single dumbbell in two hands. So I'm gonna grab it like this, thumbs forward. I'm gonna then curl up and press out in front, trying to keep my elbows right underneath my wrists. So curl, press. I'm gonna show that from the side. So I'm gonna curl and press. A couple notes to make this uh, potentially a bit easier. I can curl and press a little more vertical. To make it a little harder, I can press at more of a diagonal. And then as I go, I'm keeping a little bit of a brace here. So that way as the weight gets out in front of me, there's a tendency to want to lean back. And so I'm trying to have a nice stance braced here so that as I go, there's no movement backwards of my shoulders or my low back. Now, a couple notes here about what's going on and, and a couple tips. So as I curl up, I don't want to like have a big squeeze back. I don't necessarily need that for this exercise, but I want to make sure there's no movement in the front of the shoulder. So this curl should just be right at the elbow joint. So there might, depending on what you have going on, or your familiarity with this exercise or strength, in different parts of the shoulder, you may have to get a little bit of a squeeze back, but I don't want to overdo it because if I overdo it, then I can't press forward. And so I want to get maybe a touch of stabilization and sometimes a mirror on this one is helpful. Where you can kind of watch that shoulder out of your peripheral vision. I don't want that to move as I curl up. So that's point number one. Point number two is that as I press forward, I want to make sure that my elbows are roughly staying inward. So this dumbbell is, you know, it is the width that it is. I can't change that. And so it's a bit narrow. And so my elbow might be a touch outside my wrist, maybe just a little bit. Some adjustable dumbbells or different dumbbells are maybe a bit wider. This is a foam roller, but it's a bit wider than that dumbbell. And so if you have that, that can be actually kind of nice. So this could be, you know, some adjustable dumbbells or depending on the gym you're at, um, but a wider dumbbell can work just fine too. Something really narrow, um, like a medicine ball or something, often doesn't work because it's, it's really awkward to get in there. So a standard dumbbell works great. Longer is okay. Narrower, probably not so much. But as I go up, there's a tendency, especially around a lot of painful shoulder conditions, for the elbows to flare out. And we end up here. So often when people have pain reaching or grabbing things from up above, we, we see this elbow kind of flare out as they go up. And that can put their shoulder into an awkward position where it can limit stability from some of the muscles on the back of the shoulder. And so we don't need to go here. Like we don't need to overdo it this way because that's awkward too. But if I get that elbow in a bit from where it might otherwise drift out to, you're gonna feel it's a little bit harder and there's gonna be more muscle engaged. And sometimes if it's painful with that elbow out, it's hard, but not painful with that elbow in a bit. So sometimes we do this with a one-armed movement, but I've been liking this double arm movement recently because it kind of anchors your hands in here. So there's less moving parts and then you can really kind of see what's happening there. Um, so it tends to be a little bit more controlled. One final note, if you don't get your elbows all the way straight, that's okay. Because we're locking the hands in here, we are biasing some specific muscles in a bit way that's maybe a kind of a bit exaggerated from how we would normally reach, but we're trying to train specific muscles to get that reaching to feel stronger or more comfortable. And so if you can't get elbows dead straight, that's okay. And you can either work towards that or just not worry about it too much because you're still gonna see some difficulty. And then you can play with, over time, going a little more vertical. You can go a little bit of like a 45, and then you can go maybe like 35, 40 degrees there. And so there's value in all of the different angles where you could do a set like I'm doing now, where you hit each, each piece. So lighter than you think to start, this was a 15, and that was almost like too heavy for me to get into some of those positions. So maybe start with an eight or a 10 and see how it feels from there.